America, what a big day. It's just held the first real contest ahead of the November election for president. And Donald Trump romped it in. He won just over half the votes in the caucus in Iowa, the first state where Republican voters could choose who will be their candidate against President Joe Biden. Now, Trump streeted his two main rivals, his former UN ambassador Nikki Haley and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who are left neck and neck uh, this part through the uh, counting and way, way behind. Well, DeSantis uh, was full of excuses for not doing better, while Nikki Haley predicted DeSantis would soon have to end his sinking campaign. They spent almost $50 million attacking us. No one's faced that much all the way just through Iowa. They, the media was against us. I can safely say tonight, Iowa made this Republican primary a two-person race. And more good news for Trump. Gadfly entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy got just 8% in this caucus. He pulled out, saying now support Trump, who was so confident that he praised his rivals as he declared victory and promised two things above all when he became president again. First, to drill for more oil, and second, to close the Mexican border to the two million illegal immigrants now crossing into the United States every year under Joe Biden. We're going to seal up the border. Because right now we have an invasion. We have an invasion of millions and millions of people that are coming into our country. I can't imagine why they think that's a good thing. It's a very bad thing. I think it's a group of people that are probably larger in number than New York State. And we can't have that. Two American stations, MSNBC and CNN, cut him off when he started talking like that. They don't want to hear what might resonate with voters. Joining me now is Sean Spicer, who is Donald Trump's first spokesman in the Donald Trump White House. Sean Spicer, thank you so much for joining us. Donald Trump has got half the vote just over uh, so far. What does that tell you? Well, it tells me he's got a lot of a, a, a lot of support. Look, I think it's important to keep history in, in mind. The largest victory that anyone's ever won the Iowa caucuses is 12.8% with 41% of the vote. Trump is going to exceed both of those numbers tonight. That's got to make his campaign feel very, very good. It's it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win decisively. And tonight looks like a decisive win for Trump. If he can keep and maintain a lead of over 50%. Um, and I, look, as the night goes by here in America and people start going to sleep, they're going to be going to bed with Trump over 50 percent. Now, we've seen in, in the past, in the last several cycles, that it might take a few extra days for the final results to come in. But the, the, the prevailing narrative, Andrew, is that Donald Trump had a great night tonight. Uh, and I think that's, that's great for his campaign. And as long as Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis remain close to each other, uh, it looks like they'll both fight to live another day. That's also good for Trump. If you're Donald Trump right now, you want to keep this a multi-candidate race. You don't want this coming down to, for example, Trump versus Haley going into New Hampshire, uh, where it'll it, it, it's only you know it's eight days away. The longer that people have an opportunity to create a narrative, a one-on-one -on -one race, that doesn't help Trump. He wants to wrap this up as quick as possible. Look, we have two races in the, the month of January, uh, Iowa, New Hampshire, for a total of 62 delegates. You need 1,215 to win. We only have two more races uh, with delegates at stake in the month of February. And then it is March, March, when over 1,500 delegates are at stake. What Trump wants to do is eliminate the competition before it even gets to Super Tuesday. But once it does, on March 5th, he's the only candidate right now that has the apparatus to run uh, what's the equivalent of a, of a national primary. Yes, Nikki Haley's big hope was she should come in comfortable second. That doesn't look like happening. They're neck and neck. She's neck and neck with Ron DeSantis. She would hope that he'd drop out and then she'd clean up uh, his support. That's yeah. not happening. Uh, all good for uh, Donald Trump. But here's the thing, you know, I can't think of another candidate that's had such a media and political establishment torrent against him. He's been uh, hit with all these uh, legal cases, uh, facing uh, attempts to disqualify him even from the ballot by Democrats in 
two different states, uh, vilified as a sexual predator and a crook and an election stealer, uh, an insurrectionist, and still Republicans say, we want him. What does that tell you? That tells me that results matter. And look, when you contrast, the, most elections, Andrew, are, are hypothetical. I'll do this, I'll promise you that. What we are shaping up to have in America is, is a race where it's a strict contrast between a four years of, of a Trump presidency and a Trump administration and what will be close to four years of a Biden administration. And if you look both domestically and internationally, there couldn't be a sharper contrast. President Trump will go out and say, I was you know, energy secure as a country. We didn't rely on other countries. Our border was secure. Our economy was in better shape. More people were at work. The interest rates were a lot lower. Gas was a lot lower. And foreign policy-wise, we weren't involved in incursions. Putin wasn't invading another country. Iran wasn't going nuts. Uh, Hamas wasn't firing rockets in Israel. China wasn't as provocative as it was and certainly wasn't openly talking about taking over Taiwan the way it is. That's a very, very sharp and concrete contrast between the two campaigns. And I think the American people, when you look at the polling, start to say, I like, I might not have liked all the style of Donald Trump and the and the and some of the rhetoric, but I like the results. I was safer. I was more prosperous. My cities were better. My counties were better. And I think that's a big, big difference uh, that Donald Trump has going for him. The other thing that's the big X factor for the Democrats, Andrew, is the following. We had a poll come out this weekend by ABC News where only 28 percent of Americans said that they thought that Joe Biden had the mental prowess to be president, right? They don't believe, and, and the problem with that is that nothing gets better with age unless it's cheese or wine. And right now, Joe Biden is suffering, you know, uh, just the, the reality of becoming and getting older, both mentally and physically. I think one of the key questions here, the, uh, uh, Sean Spicer, is this. Uh, we're talking about how the Republicans feel about their candidate. What would Joe Biden, with his doddery, you know, performance and, and what you've just said about his foreign performance, which I think has been terrible, uh, the domestic uh, scene, the economy's not looking that great. He looks at today at Iowa, at the strong support for Donald Trump. Is he glad or sad? It's a, that's a great question. Uh, look, I think that a lot of Democrats, including you know Joe Biden's campaign, want to run this race against Trump. But I think they're missing something. This is the same thing that Hillary Clinton missed and so many folks in our, in our media here miss, is that there's a lot that they might disdain about Trump and his style. But th that is what draws so many people to Trump. His ability to kick dirt in the face, his ability to be unconventional, and and uh, and say things and do things that other people weren't his ability to keep foreign leaders off guard and fight for America first. Um, those are things that I think the left and the media sometimes mock, but it's what people, uh, so many working men and women find strengths. And that's the the beauty of where Democrats miss uh, read this race. It's interesting, too. I think uh, part of it might be that a lot of uh... Americans are looking at the dirty tricks used to uh, try to stop Trump and think uh, these people cannot be allowed to succeed. Um, but speaking of that, I mean, Sean, you can't have missed the hysteria going on in the media left at the moment. It is just unbelievable. I haven't seen anything like it. You've got, they've gone crazy. In, in the US, for instance, you're seeing headlines like this warning on NBC website of the election of Donald Trump dictator. Fears grow that Trump will use the military in dictatorial ways if he returns to the White House. And in the Washington Post, this amazing headline, a Trump dictatorship is increasingly inevitable. We should stop pretending. What on earth is going on? Are these people onto something that Trump is posing a risk of dictatorship or have they completely lost the plot? Well, I would say that they completely lost it, except that th this is a continuation, Andrew. Right. I was part of that 2016 effort and there was this whole false narrative about coordinating with Russia. And as someone who was there, I kept I always laughed at it at first because I thought to myself that the prevailing narrative at the time was that we couldn't coordinate with ourselves. Then it was that we coordinated with Russia. Then you look to 2020 and you think there's this Hunter Biden laptop that has very damaging accusations against the president and his family and the business dealings that they're doing. And it gets completely suppressed by big government. 
Um, you had 51 intelligence agents, I mean, uh, uh, officials sign letters about Russian disinformation. All of this stuff, they will go to no lengths to stop this president. And now we're seeing not just the headlines that you pointed out, but efforts to use the 14th Amendment of our Constitution to keep the president off the ballot, to not let democracy. And so, again, think about this for a second. One of the big narratives coming out of the Democrats is about how democracy is under attack. You see this now. It's it's manifesting itself into dictatorships. But the irony is, is that they're the ones canceling people's ability to vote. And it's not just Donald Trump. In Florida, they canceled the Democratic primary. They don't want any, Joe Biden to face any competition. And now they're using it to try to keep Donald Trump off the ballot, too. It's ironic because it's the, the folks on the left in the Democratic Party and their buddies in the media that are, in fact, the undemocratic ones. It's just extraordinary to me, and it's causing uh, America terrible damage internationally. I mean, some people actually take this stuff seriously, unfortunately. That's right. I mean, dictatorship. Uh, honestly, how they misunderstand, how they underestimate Trump, but even worse, underestimate, uh, underestimate America. Sean Spicer, thank you so much indeed for your time. Always good to be with you. Thank you.